Welcome back to CRG. Last week we were working on our C64 board. We have got it to the stage now where it does boot okay, but as you can see the colours are all messed up. We do have sound though. That just turned out to be a dodgy connection last week. SID chip is working fine. I've ordered some bits and pieces. We have a new colour RAM and we have a full test harness, test kit. Let's see if we can't get this board finished. So first things first then, what did we order? I got my new colour RAM, which is in here. But we also got various other bits and pieces, some other replacement chips, just to help us with uh, the other 64 boards we have to repair. Also got a wee bit of this solid core wire, which is easier to work with for repairing traces and things. And one of these, a spare power connector. I fancy having a go at making my own C64 power supply. This box here, all the way from Finland, has our C64 full test diagnostic harness version 1.3. I got this off a guy from Lemon64, the forums. Sells this full kit, very reasonably priced. So, I think what we'll do first is we will take our wee cartridge here. We will set it to the dead test setting. And uh, we'll plug it into our board just to confirm that it's that colour RAM that's faulty. I've set the wee cartridge just for dead test. We will run a full diagnostic later. Right, let's see if this confirms that our colour RAM is bad. And there we have, colour RAM, bad. So as we thought, we're gonna to have to replace that chip. So let's take our new colour RAM and let's get it in this machine. Then we'll run this test again and hopefully that comes up okay. So this is the colour RAM here. I'm just going in with a small flat headed screwdriver. So I'm just going to lift one side at a time. And there we are. That's the old one out. This socket is not the best. I know I did say last time that I was going to remove this socket. I've obviously decided not to do that. The main reason being that uh, with the amount of pads gone underneath, the only way I'm going to get that out is using heat, probably destroy the socket in the process and run the risk of further damaging this board by uh, pulling out some of the vias that are in there as well. Um, it does appear to be working though. That's why I've decided to leave it as is. Let's put that to the test with this chip. There we are. Right, let's run our dead test again. And hopefully this time we get an okay. So you can immediately see that the colours look right now. It did come up okay there. I have no idea what it's doing now. Is that normal? I don't know. 
Oh, there we are. Came back. I was obviously doing a RAM test of some shape form or another. Right. That's it. Seems to be working okay now. What I think we'll do now is put this chip in the bin. And then we will connect up the rest of our test kit. We'll change this over to diagnosis mode. So it's going to test everything on the board. And then hopefully we'll get a clean bill of health for this old Commodore 64. See, rather than bin these actually, let's get an old cardboard box. We'll call it dead chips. And let's leave it lying in there. It'll just be interesting to see how many dead parts we get after we're finished fixing up all these various 64s. Now, we need to change our cartridge into C64 diagnostic mode. So that's really easy to do. We just change the wee dip switches here on this jumper. So A15, 14 and 13 need to all be low. That's these three. EX ROM needs to be closed, which I think is on, and game needs to be open. In fact, of course it is because it's the opposite of the way we had it last time. The ROM needs to be set to low, it's currently high, change that jumper. That's us ready to go in diagnostic mode. really is a brilliant wee cartridge that also has various other tests on it as well including a 1541 diagnostic i'll have to figure out how to make use of that so i can test my disk drive All right we have this terminator that goes in here this to test the serial port this nice wee 3d printed case around this part and very handily says up on it there we are the keyboard terminator this side here that has the one pin outside of the box that goes down Then the last bits and pieces, this one goes on to the cassette port, and this goes in here. Right, that's us. Let's get this part up again, and let's run the full test. Okay, so we've got a problem, unfortunately. U1 bad, U2 bad. I was not expecting that. So that is the two CIA chips up here. U1 and U2. I mean, everything works okay. What is going on? If those chips were bad, I would expect that this here, where the time is here, and this would be all screwed up. That is a common uh, sign that those chips are bad, but it's, that looks okay to me. Again, user port, bad. Everything else checks out okay. Now, I do have one replacement uh, 6526 chip. So these, these are interchangeable. 
By the way, it's just exactly the same chip in both positions. This one's in a socket. What I think we'll do is pull this out and we'll fit the other chip that I have that I know is good and we'll see if it makes any difference on the test. Going straight in and swapping this chip out might be jumping ahead a bit. I wonder could it be just as simple as a dirty connection here on the user port. So we'll just pull this off. And I'm just going to take a, a cotton bud with a little bit of IPA. I mean that is quite dirty isn't it? If you can see that. So I'm just going to give this a bit of a clean. Power's off to the board by the way and it's off at the plug. Always disconnect before you do anything like this. As you can see it's absolutely stinking. There's probably a good chance this has never been used on this board. Brasso is apparently really good at cleaning these. And there's the battery dead. Yeah, I do really like this camera, but it absolutely chews through the batteries. So I have given this a good clean. As you can see, it was absolutely filthy instead of those. I wonder could the problem be as simple as that? So let's get that back on. And let's run our test again. And what do you know? It was as simple as that. Just a dirty connector. User port's now okay. And we have no bad down here. Just as well, we didn't jump in and start swapping out chips. There was no need to. That is this C64 board finished. Well. Apart from the fact it does need a decent clean and it does need a case to live in. I give our board a little bit of a clean. Also added one of these wee heat sinks on the SID just to help keep it cool as that chip does run kind of hot. Down here around that uh, colour ram where there had been all the work done before and where a lot of the copper had been exposed by someone. I have put, painted a little bit of green nail varnish on there just to protect those uh, exposed copper traces. We've got the board back in its base. Let's fit the lid. I'll screw it together later. But for now, I really think we should try and uh, play a bit of Donkey Kong. So as you can see now, colours look fantastic. And that SID chip sounds absolutely amazing, doesn't it? Playing this Donkey Kong tune. That's the song from Donkey Kong Country, actually, on the snares. It was lifted and put into this game for the 2016 release.
Let's see how high we can get. Oh, crap. I suck at this game. Let's have another go. Just quickly. I'll stand back a bit this time. Perfect. Well, that's it for this time. Our C64 is fully repaired. Everything checks out fine in that diagnostic test. Just loading up a little bit of Commando here. One of my favorite games on the 64. We do have that other C64 board to take a look at. That's the one that I said last time, if you remember, had suffered the really bad over voltage. So I'm expecting to find a couple of dead RAM chips in there. I'm just waiting on delivery of some sockets. If you remember, we robbed a few chips off that board to fix this one. So I want to get some sockets on there so we can swap things about. You have to love that music in Commando, don't you? Absolutely fantastic. So if you want to see more videos on repairing the C64, please let me know in the comment section below. But until then, that's it for this time. I would appreciate a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Why not hit subscribe so you don't miss any future stuff. And uh, yeah, see you next time.